Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you so much minister. Now let's get to another critical you know, topic that's to deal with the rule of law in Zambia because that's something that, of course, you uh, promised the people of Zambia that, so, that once ushered into office, you were going to ensure that um, good governance was going to be uh, your you know, daily uh, routine. Where are we now? There are some concerns, citizens up to now, they feel that the UPND government is becoming more harsh on some critical voices. These are the opposition leaders who have lamented. As we speak right now, there is actually even a court whose your SG has been quoted having said, uh, your deputy SG, Madam, Madam Batuke Menda, uh, Gertrude Demenda rather, I apologize, who is quoted that um, the opposition will no longer be holding public rallies because the situation or security situation is quite volatile. Again, there is another statement that, uh, of course, uh, the IG himself has been quoted as well by we in the media, having said that uh, there will be no public rallies whatsoever. What is the position of government regarding all this debate going on? Thank you very much, uh, Innocent. And uh, allow me to use two caps here that I must wear them both now to speak as... Uh, party spokesperson of the UPND and give a UPND position in that regard that we as UPND as a party will live and govern this country by the rule of law and not the rule of men. We as a party respect the decisions of government and that we are very clear about the distinction of government and a party and therefore as a party we shall not do anything that undermines what government stands, what we have stood for for many years in the opposition let me take this opportunity to indicate their government position that uh, the government republic of zambia under the able leadership of uh, President Haga Indehidem, has no intentions whatsoever to stifle citizens' rights, rights to freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and freedom of association. There is nothing like that whatsoever. And I would like to indicate that it is not party and it is not government position that the opposition will no longer peaceably assemble in the manner they like in the marketplace of ideas for them to interact with the citizens. That is not party position, that is not government position, and that is what I am saying. And so, there will be times like this when individuals may say certain things, uh, if those things that are said are not in sync with the position of government, I'm afraid hmm. to give government position. And the position I give is final. Hmm. There is I, only I, one person. What I'm going to do to your deputy SG, Madam Get. Yeah, Minister, my question is, you are the spokesperson for the party UPND. At the same time, again, you are the chief government spokesperson for the ruling party, which is the government. And your deputy SG is on record 
having, you know, informed the general public that there will be no public rallies. What are you going to do? Because you are all senior leaders in that, in that, in that political party. You are, you are right, innocent, except that I think that uh, here what you are doing is you asked me to give you government position. I've given you that what Madame Imenda said is not government position as government spokesperson. Number two, what Madame Imenda said is not party position hmm. because as a party, we have no authority whatsoever to stop another party or parties from holding political rallies. We don't have that authority. We are not like PF who would use a party platform to say, no, this will be a no-go area. No, such kind of politics is bad politics. So hmm. I want the nation to know that uh, under the leadership of President HH, the opposition will continue to thrive the opposition will continue to hold political gatherings, the political rallies. Are you there telling is us, no Minister, news about it. Honorable Minister, are you telling me that uh, in your party the, there is no discipline whatsoever? You know, you, you live in an organization where any leader can wake up in the morning and in the evening and issue the statements that they feel like without really counter-checking with some of you, the leaders. Do you are you telling me that there's no discipline in your political party? And again, the, the, the IG has been quoted as well. Are you telling me that the IG was spoke with these uh, you know, remarks representing himself and not the government which you are part of? I want to indicate here, uh, Innocent, that the inspector of police is the head of the police service. So, I do not want to uh, bring him into this debate because police should not be debated uh, through the, this political platform. My job is to give government position. It's as simple as that. Mm. Unless uh, you are forgetting, innocent, that you are asking me as chief government spokesperson to give government position. Because when I give you government position, that is final. It means whatever else was said, does not stand anymore. Unless you are saying also me, you are taking me with the content. Me, I'm, if you ask me to give you a position of government as government spokesperson, I'll give you just that. If you are asking me as a party spokesperson, I'll give you just that. The idea of having a party spokesperson is to have a person who will give a, an official position of a party. The idea of having a chief government spokesperson is to have one person who will give an official position of government when there are so many statements coming from all over. This is what I've just done. So, this is government position. The opposition in Zambia will continue to peaceably and freely assemble. How, minister, that is in how, 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 with, how can you be, how can you be trusted, right. Minister? Why should Zambians trust your, 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 your position right now as government when it is the same government and the IG who has from time to time you know, indicated to some opposition political party leaders who have planned or intended in the past to hold public rallies and they have been told that you can't go ahead because the situation, uh, you know, the, the situation system in the country is not okay. So how can you be trusted, Minister? Thank you, Innocent, for that uh, question. I think uh, for me, uh, it's not a question of how much I should be trusted or how we must mm. be trusted. It's a question of the law. What does the law say? And this is a government of laws, not of men. Mm. And so, President HH will do everything possible to ensure that the law is defended to the latter. And in this new year of 2024, I want to assure the nation that uh, 2024 should be a new beginning going forward. I think that uh, we have been in government enough now that uh, some of the teething challenges we faced in the last two years should no longer be part and parcel of the excuses of the situations that we must find ourselves in. 
It is now time to do things by the book of the law. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Minister. Let's move on to um, another issue. I uh, will also bring in the accusations on your government, of course, from your critics who have said that uh, your government seems to be selective when it comes to implementing or the application of uh, the, the, the rule of law in, in our country. And the examples that we can cite here, we've got a case where today your SG now, Mr. Batuke Menda, has been again reported by Mr. Sean Tembo uh, because he feels that your government through the police, the judiciary, are not moving in in ensuring that Mr. Menda is prosecuted before the court of law, is cleared before the court of law. The way, the same way we have seen other leaders in the opposition who have been arrested for hate speech or, you know, uh, seemingly hate speech. And here comes your SG, your chief executive officer, Mr. Baduke Menda, who called the Archbishop of Lusaka, Bishop Alec Banda, among others, that is a Lucifer of Zambia. And this matter was reported by Mr. Kasonde Mwenda. I think that was a week later. Mr. Baduke Menda has never been arrested. While others, I can cite the case of Honorable Shimba Kambwili, among others, Sean Tembo himself. These are some of the individuals who have been arrested for head speech. How fair is your government? Well, first of all, I'm not going to speak, uh, I'm not going to speculate. I will not speculate. I will speak from information within my possession. What I know where I sit here is that um, Honorable Imen and indeed the leadership of our party and government met the Catholic bishops, the president inclusive, met the Catholic bishops once that issue came up. And it was on a round table discussion and it ended up amicably. I think I'm not far from the fact that an apology was rendered by Honorable Imenda to the Catholic bishops who accepted the apology. Now, Innocent, you may wish to know that in terms of Section 8 of the Subordinate Courts Act, the courts allow and do or does the law promote mm. reconciliation between individuals over matters that are not of grave nature that are not felonious in nature. Section 8 of the Subordinate Courts Act, if I call you a name, and then quickly I, I call you, uh, sorry, 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 I know I was taken by uh, emotions or whatever, we are able to reconcile. Mm. Somebody can't wake up from nowhere and say, no, we heard what uh, Mr. Mwetwa said on that state of the nation addressed to, to innocent. At, at Me, that I'm point, taking the minister to was this no, apology rendered to the Catholic yeah, Church. Yeah. At, yeah. Minister, yeah. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, I want you to put this on record. At what point was this apology rendered to the Catholic bishops by Honorable Batoke Menda? In which month was it? Well, I mean, there was a meeting which was held. I may not just speak out the, the month. Remember that there are two issues here. There is a pending meeting between government and the Catholic bishops. That has nothing to do with the, the Lucifer story. The Lucifer issue, uh, that issue, once it came out, the Catholic bishops, they, they met, uh, you know, the president and, uh, uh, you know, the president first uh, sent, uh, you know, uh, a contingent of, I think, seven uh, ministers who met with the leadership of the Catholic Church. And then after that, a meeting was held where you know discussions were held and the reconciliation is struck now the only thing is that and i think it was even in the media so i'm surprised that uh, maybe you missed that one i don't think so minister it was not maybe from where i stand as kbn tv that apology was not really rendered or maybe we never captured it with as kbn tv from where i stand but i'll bring to your attention honorable minister that on 10th of November this year, uh, last year rather, 
the Catholic bishops in their pastoral letter, these were among the issues they highlighted that they feel offended because Honorable Emenda did not apologize to uh, Archbishop uh, uh, Banda and the team over those remarks for calling them Lucifer of Zambia or Lucifers of Zambia. So I, that's why I wanted to find out from you, when was this apology rendered? Well, what I can now uh, bring to your attention is that uh, because this matter, uh, you are now bringing to my attention that uh, they reiterated it as one of their areas of concern. I cannot therefore proceed to comment on the same because then it becomes part and parcel of what will be discussed at the dialogue forum between government and uh, the Catholic uh, bishops. I can't uh, comment further uh, because I will be presumptuous so if this matter, Honorable Minister, will be part of the agenda that will be discussed under the you know, forthcoming dialogue with the church and the other stakeholders, then it will be misleading for you, possibly, to claim that uh, Archbishop or your SG apologized to the Catholic Bishop or apologized to Dr. Arik Banda. Is that so? No, I'm not misleading myself at all. Mm. Uh, innocent, very far from, very far from it. I'm telling you details of the things that I know. Remember that it's not every uh, meeting that take place between government officials and civil society and or church that you yourselves as media get to know all the facts. And this is what I'm telling you that mm. uh, Honorable Emenda was in that meeting with the Catholic bishops where he apologized in person to them. Maybe the issue should be that you should be demanding is to say maybe he did not make a public apology. An apology was rendered. Mm. Right. Let's also add on to this issue, Honorable uh, Minister, of, uh, of course, the, the, the rule of law in Zambia. Just uh, last week, we also read um, a very long statement that came from the the, the, the OCDA as well. They have been speaking to the same issues. Your government has been accused that your government is number one arrogant. Your government seems not to be listening to, not to be willing to listen to critical voices. You only want to listen to yourselves. Among the issues they brought in was the matter of uh, the rule of law as well and also the happening in the patriotic front. OCDA was clear that your government seemed to be the one sponsoring the confusion in the former ruling party. <laughs> you know, Zed, you are making my day right now. <laughs> now, let me be serious on this uh, particular issue. Firstly, um, New Dawn administration has nothing to do with uh, the happenings in the patriotic front. You may re wish to recall that Mr. Mao Samba wanted to become president of PF from as far early as 2015. In fact, 2014, when uh, Mr. Michael Sata, you know, uh, when we lost Mr. Michael Sata, and may he so rest in peace. Now, are you telling me that it was UPND sponsoring Mr. Mao Samba in 2015 when PF were in government and Mr. Mao Samba wanted to be president? No. So this is a person who has always wanted to become president of the Patriotic Front. And from the way they are, you know, in, in fact, I'm, I'm getting very surprised that we must be made to answer for the confusion that is happening in a political party, which is an intra-party issue. We have no business in PF. Look, innocent, we were in the opposition ourselves for many, many years. We had a situation where after elections, uh, the, the government would poach a number of uh, MPs. I recall in 2003 that uh, President Mwanawasa, may he so rest in peace, poached, I think, about eight MPs at once, if not more. Did, uh, did we cry foul? You recall also, uh, not too long ago, uh, that uh, once uh, PF. Uh, we are declared we opposition. We held together. We were disciplined. We had issues of Bill 10, 
where they were busy looking for people to vote with them because we were disciplined, we had a vision for country. We held together as united. Why is it that whenever PF have problems, then people must join all over to begin to mourn with them? Why mourn with people like that? Mm. Today I don't let, want let, to call let, them let, Let's look at the signs, anymore. Honorable Minister. Let, let's look at these signs and uh, the the possible evidence that points fingers at your, your administration of having gone to bed on, with Honorable Mao Sampa. And I'll quote a letter which was issued by Osida here. One of the bullets that I've highlighted is that there is a decreasing confidence in the judiciary and uh, uh, they, they appeal to the, to the Chief Justice, Honorable Mumba Malira, to, uh, to, to quickly get involved. On number two, they are saying we call on the Chief Justice, Dr. Mumba Malira, to take keen interest in the cases they have, uh, the, in the cases which are critical in nature. Now, number three, that's what, where I want to now to take note of this. He's saying, they are saying, we are gravely concerned with the conduct of the judiciary in, in political sensitive cases involving the main opposition political party, uh, PF, and Mr. Mao Sampa, including the one which stems from what they call illegal convention that was facilitated by the state on the 24th of October 2023. So Osida here is not missing the words. They are saying this illegal convention was facilitated by you, the state. May, but of course, maybe if you may I want to argue, my question I have to you, what Osida is saying by facilitating this illegal convention which has been described in this manner is that who sent those police officers to go and demand the illegal convention according to Osida on that particular day? And that was a busy day, that was the 24th of, of October, which was independence. How did Honorable Mao Sampa and his team manage to have his fair share of the police officers? And who paid those police officers because when they were on duty, those, if at all there were some allowances? Thank you very much, uh, Innocent, for that uh, question. And I'll answer it squarely and fairly. Please call Mr. Mao Sampa and ask him to answer those questions. Because me, I was not there. We in government, we were not there. We don't know. Ask the ones who are involved. They will tell you whether they wrote to ask for police presence. I'm sure they have documentation. You are asking me to answer for a club affair. Me, I can only answer for UPND party and for UPND government. Not those are your police officers, Ask Minister. Mr. Honorable Mr. Minister, Mr. those are your police officers. All the police officers belong to the government of Zambia and the man in charge of the Republic of Zambia or the government is you who speak on behalf of the government. So you can't run away, you can't escape to say, go and ask Honorable Mao Sampa. My question is, I'm asking you, who allowed those police officers to go and demand that convention? And who paid them? Let me, let me, let me make it easier for you, uh, innocent, because you, you are lucky you have me in this situation, because I'm a policeman myself, eh? I know how the police works very well. The police, if you are going to have a wedding, uh, innocent, you can write to the nearest police station, the officer in charge, requesting for police motorcade to escort you for that wedding. If you want police to man a private event, you write to them and say, we request for such a number of police officers, we have such, such a function, and we are going to pay them allowances. Whenever police are going to do something which is away from normal duty of government, the one who has invited them pays them. The same way when you find police are money a bit at a bank, just know that the bank is the one paying the, the, those police officers at that bit. Allowances, that is how police works. If you want to try it tomorrow, write to police and say we want uh, police officers to come and be money KBN. They will come and start providing security at KBN, and they will be charging you. Don't That's you, don't you saying, think, Honorable Minister, someone... that, uh, Honorable Minister, don't you think this is the, you know, what many citizens have described as the hypocrisy from your end in the manner you are doing things? Because 
on a busy day like Independence Day when Zambians or when the police officers were anticipated to be more busier than a normal day, Honorable Mao Sampa or oh, this opposition leader managed to have his fair share of the police officers on a busy day, Honorable Minister. Let's just pause a little bit and answer that question. But when the opposition apply or notify the police to have a rally on a normal day, a not busy day, you are saying the police are busy or the situation is not okay in the country. Don't you think that's the hypocrisy which Zambians or some Zambians have talked about? Well, first of all, I don't know what you're talking about here. What do you mean hypocrisy? I need to understand. Innocent, what do you mean? What I mean, Honorable Minister, is that we've seen the opposition political party leaders or political parties in this country who have attempted to have public rallies on a normal day when the country is not busy. There are no public functions whatsoever. And I've been told that the police officers are busy or we don't have enough manpower to come and police your, your event. And then Independence Day comes, a busy day, they, this opposition political party leader manages to have a fair share of his function in the name of Honorable Mao Sampa. Is this not the hypocrisy or the double standards which Zambians have talked about? Not long ag again, we also saw Honorable Mao Sampa being received by a battalion of police officers at the airport when he was arriving from South Africa. All these are examples. These are things that I, you know, lingering in the minds of the people. That's what I mean, Honorable Minister. First of all, let me put uh, this matter into uh, perspective. Number one, that it is not government policy and position to deny opposition their space to do their politics. And going forward, the government position is very clear. We want our citizens to enjoy the rights as enshrined in the Constitution. What we saw as wrong in the opposition cannot all of a sudden become right now that we are in government. That is government position. And the president is determined to ensure that we continue to govern on the basis of the rule of law. Number two, when you talk about Mr. Mao Sampa, you know, being received by police, I want to indicate maybe uh, you're asking me too much that I should. But I'll tell you that uh, Mr. Mao Sampa, just like uh, many of the colleagues uh, in PF, we are friends. And those who are in PF, they know the number of threats at the life of Mr. Mao Sampa that he has received. And it is him at his own behest who requested for protection as a lawmaker that in view of these threats, and remember this, when you, when you want this police protection, you, know, you, don't, you don't come to, to me or to go to Honorable Jackie Mwimbo. No, you write to police to say there is this security threat. I need help. Because the mandate of the police is just to one, to, to one, to preserve life of uh, citizens. Number two is to to protect property by maintaining law and order in the country. So if you yourself there, you feel threatened, you have a barrage of uh, messages on your WhatsApp, people threatening you to say, this move which you have done, we are going to do this and this and this to you. You are at liberty to write to police and police will give you protection because you are a citizen. We should not politicize everything, including things that are straightforward. Hmm. All right, Honorable Minister, we have to begin to wind up. I will allow maybe a few phone calls to come in, maybe two or three calls to come in as we wind up the program. But before that, there is a, you know, a, a question here and uh, you know a challenge that has come from uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Uh, Andy Ford Jimayele Banda, uh, President of the People's Alliance for Change. He was made a few demands. Actually, he's given your government uh, through ZCCMIH uh, 27 hours. 
in which they should be able to disclose in terms of uh, the, uh, you, you know, the, the relevance and also the legibility of, uh, you know, another company. Let me just read the full statement so that we don't confuse ourselves. So the statement reads in part here, Opposition part, part, uh, People's Alliance for Change, Party President Andrew Dimaile Banda, has issued a seven days ultimatum to ZCCMIH to provide information regarding the profile of government's recent and veiled strategic equity partner in Mopani Copper Mine International Resources Holdings IRH of Abu Dhabi. In December last year, Party President Mr. Maire Banda wrote to ZCCMIH Chief Executive Officer demanding, to, demanding for an explanation to show how uh, a foreign entity without traceable, these are things I would want to, Honorable Minister, to mark, without traceable operations in mining could be considered as an equity partner in Mopani. Uh, however, following the lack of feedback from the public, publicly listed company within which has 75% 70, government shareholding. The, comp the party has now engaged lawyers from EM Mukuka and the company legal practitioners requ requesting for information to be availed to their client pack within seven days uh, in which field at which they will be able to take legal actions. So maybe you may be able to answer these questions being you know, asked by Mr. Andy Ford Maire Banda in terms of the equity partnership of this foreign company, which is uh, an international resources holding IRH of Abu Dhabi. What's the truth about it? Well, first of all, um, uh, innocent. I think that uh, that issue which you have raised, first of all, is, um, I'm thinking to myself, that in this era, when you want information from a public entity, there is, still, is there still need for out meta? There is access to information. So just check the provisions that relate to the same. No acrimony and the right, and you'll be given the right uh, information. Mm. That's all. It should not be a, a, you know, it shouldn't be a difficult issue. There is access to information law which entitle citizens to access such information. Uh, so yeah, I would uh, urge Mr. Anfold Banda to just uh, follow through the channels as provided by law to access that information. Because that ultimatum may not uh, be, in my view, the right way to go about it. Or maybe this is a, a challenge to us as a Minister of Information to do more to publicize the access to information law and the provisions and opportunities that citizens can utilize to access information, no need for acrimony. Thank, thank you so much, Minister. Uh, thank you so much. That's the answer maybe we are looking for. Uh, lastly, let's look at um, the confusion going on right now in Serenje. Uh, you go to Serenje, we've seen that uh, there is confusion where some suspected UPND cadres are busy grabbing people's minds and they are going on in Serenje. You can go to Chitambo as well. These are reports that we have uh, received with the, so much confusion happening in the mining sector. Also, some youths have, you know, died in Chingola. They are, they are sincerely, you know, a mining site. And uh, yet your government assured to remedy all these problems. How do you intend to resolve these issues where your, your suspected UPND cadres are said to be grabbing people's you know, mines in Serenje and Chitambo. Well, thank you for that uh, uh, piece of information. The only thing I can uh, do right now is to give you government assurance that no one will have their mind grabbed by any individual donning themselves as a UPND supporter or uh, as we call ourselves a cadre. I think that the government is very clear about how it wants uh, uh, goings about in uh, that particular sector, that uh, whoever wants to get involved in mining, you need to get a mining you know, license. And the beauty with this particular sector is that it's not happening for the first time. We have seen that there are cases already that are before the courts of law uh, relating to certain uh, individuals encroaching 
on people's minds, those people being uh, UPND members. They're appearing before the courts of law uh, right now. So I don't see that uh, there should be any difference uh, right now. No one is going to be entering uh, mines uh, illegally. So that it is just that simple and basic. Uh, president HH is the president uh, who is uh, leading uh, under the ambit of the law of law and therefore there should be no change of heart even when those who may be said to be involved are said to be uh, UPND supporters. I think that uh, the president actually reiterated uh, this particular point when he was addressing the nation uh, two weeks ago to say genuine, genuine UPND members will heed to his you know, guidance and ensure that uh, we are going to uh, you know, uh, lead the country in accordance with the electoral commitments and promises, namely the rule of law. All right, let me just pick up our two calls, and then we close the program, Honorable Minister. Um, call up. Good evening, and welcome to State of the Nation. Good evening. Good evening. Tell us uh, your name and where you're calling us from. Uh, yes, uh, this is Mulonda. I'm calling from Dora. Please go ahead, Mr. Mulonda. I've got a minute. Thank you. Honorable Minister, good evening. Good evening, Please go Mr. ahead, Mr. Able to get you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mlonda. You are now answering your own question. The minister will respond to you. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Don't be, don't be uh, uh, lying, Mr. Moderator. Okay. You. What is your question? Thank you so much, Mr. Mlonda. We appreciate you. All right. I can pick up my last call, and then from there we call it a night. We know that we began the program a little bit uh, late, and of course our time has already been compensated. Call a good evening, and welcome to the program. Good evening. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. This is Comrade Mkosa, calling from Modern Rusa. Please go ahead, Comrade Mkosa. Yeah, uh, may I just want to find out from Honorable Minister. Mm. Um, as a party, mm. when are they going to um, start following up the, to monitor CTF projects? Because we have observed that in some circumstances, those where MPs are who are coming from opposition, they don't want to take development there because they feel threatened to say it will give uh, people of that uh, those areas will give credit to the new government mm. so, and uh, it will be an advantage to to the new government uh, in 2026. Then the second one, I want to talk about the division that are in PF. Mm. I think it is just an encouragement to the PF uh, members that as long as they continue to accuse other political parties and the uh, member of the republic, innocent member of this uh, country, they won't solve their problems. The problem they have, they need to solve them, to solve it as a party. They, 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 they erred when they allowed Yohati Karungu to come back. Mm. Because if, if it is a way Garungu loves PF, what he would have done 
is to sit down the people that he are he suspects to be uh, the one bringing uh, problems in PM to chart the way forward. But now he has allowed himself to be part of the problem. And those people who are, who are aspiring to become president, the president uh, of PF, now they don't just uh, show it or tell, tell it uh, out because they are afraid of uh, the same way they are But they are not happy. So the, th the good thing they can do is to sit down as a political party and desist from um, accusing uh, innocent people who have got nothing whatsoever. Uh, what is happening in their party. I mean, Thank this is what I wanted to put across, comrade. Thank you so much, comrade Mkosa. I appreciate you. All right, uh, Minister, you may attend to the two questions, uh, I mean, comments that have come from our callers, Mr. Mlonda, uh, who was uh, advancing a question that uh, don't you think that the police officers they have got a mandate to sometimes check within the law and uh, decide whether to give a go ahead uh, a rally or not? At the same time, Mr. Mulonda, he goes and emphasizes further uh, to make a point that uh, is there, what does the law say on public rallies? Can a political party hold a rally now? That's a question, if I got Mr. Mulonda correctly. Thank you very much. Uh, on the first question of uh, is there time for rallies to be held? Uh, can we wait? Uh, can we read the Electoral Act and maybe? Uh, it spells out the time when um, there should be campaign. Well, campaign rallies, cam the Electoral Act speaks about campaign periods and it stipulates the campaign period to be three, three months from, you know, within three months of the date of elections. Now, these uh, meetings that uh, political parties want to hold right now uh, do not fall within that definition of uh, campaign rally. These are ordinary uh, political meetings which are guaranteed by the Constitution in terms of the right to freely associate. So that right cannot be extinguished by any other subsidiary legislation, including the Electoral Act. Citizens should enjoy that right of assembly at all times, the right to assemble, the right to associate, it's actually called the right of assembly and association. So that cannot be extinguished by any other subsidiary legislation which is entrenched in the Constitution. And what that means is that it cannot be in Parliament, cannot amend that particular provision, it has to be amended through a referendum by the people of Zambia. That's how important that right you know, mm. is. Now, secondly, the issue to do with uh, can the police determine the security situation in the country and therefore give a go ahead or not? Of course, the police have the mandate to determine the security situation in the country, particularly where the opposition have been calling for to take the law in their own hands calling on the citizens, rise, 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 as optimized by Honorable Given Rubina, to rise and go where? People are enjoying their peace, which you denied the people. Huh? Under your leadership, there was anarchy. People were scared to speak freely. They only managed to speak through the ballot. Today, you want to become champions uh, of, of, uh, of uh, freedoms that you denied. Uh, the citizens rise, rise, rise to where? So now when you have that kind of a situation, you find that the police become apprehensive that if these people are calling for anarchy in the country, they are calling, they want to take the law in their own hands. They are even calling, talking of bloodshed in the country for the first time. So police become, they raise their security antenna so high that even when a genuine meeting is being caught by the opposition, the police may suspect that ah, this could be one of those meetings that might end up spiraling out and degenerating into disorder. Since these people's intent is already in public domain, it's known that they want disorder in the country. That is not to say we would like as government that the police would deny 
uh, citizens from enjoying their rights. No, the police are there to facilitate for the smooth enjoyment of the rights of the people and therefore nothing unreasonable, and I'm using the word reasonable in the legal sense, nothing unreasonable should be done to prevent citizens from enjoying their rights. Right. We have also to be mindful that where your right ends, mine begins. So we must be very, very uh, mindful. Let me sample, I'm talking about CDF, monitoring CDF projects. Mm. Well, I think I'm finding a bit of a challenge, I must be honest here. I've been a member of parliament, this is my third term. All the 10 years that I was uh, a member of parliament in the opposition, each time government released money to us as members of parliament, there is no single day it crossed my mind that, no, this money, I'll, I'll hold it back, I'll not use it, so that if I use it, the government of the day will look popular. Because after all, Constituents Development Fund is a fund that was created by members of parliament to be able to make them relevant to the electorate so that they can be closer to the people, they can be the drivers of the developmental agenda in the constituents. That's why it's called Constituency Development Fund. So in my mind of minds, I actually think that the majority of MPs out there actually want to use their CDF uh, for the benefit of uh, their electorates because, in fact, all those who are using CDF prudently, they are becoming more relevant uh, and connected uh, to their electorates. They are endearing their relationship using CDF. So at some point, I don't understand where a member of parliament really would say, no, we want to use CDF because a new dawn will become uh, popular. I think that would be quite detrimental to any member of parliament. And as far as I know, the majority of uh, members of parliament, if not all, uh, really want to use CDF in the fullest to ensure that their electorates benefit and it also gives them that connection with the electorates. And I can tell you, Innocent, in 2026, you expect a higher uh, you know, uh, number of uh, members of parliament being returned to parliament because now they have become more relevant to the electorates because of the expanded CDF, which has seen them commission more projects than we ever commissioned before ourselves. When and we how do you rate your stay in, in government, Honorable Minister? Some people are saying well, that I can possibly come 2026, you'll be voted out of power. How would you rate your, your, your chances of uh, remaining in, in power come 2026? Well, I think uh, for me, uh, that is uh, in the purview of the people of Zambia. They determine, you know, what they want at a given time. But so far, going by the performance of this particular president, President HH, when you look at uh, the electoral commitments made, those that have been delivered, I see no reason why he cannot secure another term. I think he has brought decency to the presidency, and not just decency, he is working around the clock, trying to turn around the economic situation of our country. I'm pretty sure that by 2026, Zambia's economic outlook will be far much more better than where we are now. We are still in the reconstruction stage. To destroy is easier, to rebuild is more difficult, but we have a president who is equal to the task. And I think the majority of Zambians today, even if you voted uh, innocent, today, not tomorrow, I can tell you that uh, President H.H. will bounce back on account of what he has been able to do. There is sounding sanity of uh, peace in the nation that is reigning supreme. Today you can host me here. Today you can host opposition. No fear that uh, some funny uh, group of uh, thugs will storm your TV station and say, COVID. Look at that me, drama Minister, is over. Go now, um, confirm with me, Minister, as we go right now for the sake of, uh, you know, the, the debate, um, many citizens, you know, feel that the whole, the two years, you were blaming the party front. It was all about what they did. It was all about the mess they left. Would you confirm that uh, the blame game now is a long gone story beginning this year as we go? Innocent, 
it's no it's not going anywhere it's here to stay for as long as we see the consequences of the decisions that were made by the patriotic front in government and you particularly you innocent you are trying to lump that on me to say you as new dawn i always remind you that we are here because of where we've come from a man without a history cannot be used as a reliable guide for the future i have stated elsewhere that uh, asking us to stop talking about the patriotic front is like asking christians to stop mentioning the devil as they go to church yet they know that the devil is the one who is busy tempting them every day and putting them in this difficult situation they find themselves that they must pray ceaselessly this is dj mutati exclusive Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Pondum. I love you, peace, I gotta go.